Hi, Chad Highland, Versamatic Pump. Today we're going to rebuild our E5 Bolt Metallic Poly Center Pump with an airing kit. Out front we have our genuine Versamatic parts of a wet end kit and an airing kit. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine. But for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during this presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and airing kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. For somatic genuine replacement parts, wet end and airing kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals and more information, visit us on the web at www.versamatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rump video on safety at versamatic.com. Our airside rebuild today will include the following. Gasket, O-rings, U-cup seals, valve insert, and valve diverter. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 7 16 inch, 1 half inch, 3 4 inch, 5 30 seconds inch socket head allen wrench, Let's get started. Today we're going to use a 3 8 impact gun for ease of maintenance. Let's remove the discharge manifold. Remove the discharge manifold and set aside for later rebuild. Remove the discharge check balls. Remove the valve seats and the valve seat O-rings. Now remove the suction manifold. Set the suction manifold aside for later rebuild. Go ahead and repeat this process for the second side. Now remove one outer chamber. Set this outer chamber aside for later reassembly. Now remove the opposite outer chamber and set aside for later reassembly. Holding one diaphragm assembly, begin to ratchet off the opposite side. Once the diaphragm assembly is removed, remove the diaphragm assembly that is attached to the rod Set aside the inner plate and outer plate and diaphragm. Go ahead and remove the shaft retainer plates. Set aside the shaft retainer plate for later rebuild. Remove the main shaft o-ring and discard. 
remove the pilot spool bumper o-ring and discard Now remove the pilot spool. Now remove the shaft retainer plate, set aside for later reassembly. Remove the main shaft o-ring and discard. Remove the pilot shaft sleeve and set aside. Now we'll remove the air valve assembly. Now we're going to rebuild our air valve assembly. Remove the air valve end cap retainers from the bottom of the air valve. This will allow us to remove the end caps. Retain the end cap retainers for later rebuild. Remove the end cap. Remove the old o-ring from the end cap and discard. Push the spool from the center out one end. Take note that the valve spool is unbalanced. Now remove the old air valve spool U-cup seals. Discard old U-cup seals. Now remove the air valve sleeve. Once the air valve sleeve has been removed, remove the old O-rings and discard. Now we're ready to install our airing kit. Install the new O-rings into the O-ring grooves. Apply grease to these O-rings. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. Insert the sleeve into the air valve body. Be sure that the air valve sleeve is flush with the end of the air valve body. Install the U-cup seal with the U-cup portion facing inward. Be sure to properly seat the U-cup into the accepted groove on the air valve spool. Once the U-cups have been installed on the air valve spool, apply grease to the U-cup. This will ensure there is no damage to the U-cup. Be sure to compress the U-cup as you insert it within the air valve body so you do not damage the U-cup seal and that it properly seals within the air valve body. Install the new O-ring on the end cap to the accepted O-ring groove. Apply grease to the O-ring. Ensure we do not damage the O-ring during installation. Apply a little grease to the air valve body for ease of installation. If the end cap goes in too far, use the spool to push it back to set it be sure the end cap is flush with the air valve body. Alignment of the end cap is vital to the reinstallation of the air valve end cap retainers. Now we're going to install our valve diverter. Be sure that the cup portion of the valve diverter is facing towards the ceramic valve insert. Be sure we align all the porting on our air valve gasket with the air valve body. Now we're ready to install our air valve body. Ensure the proper orientation of the air valve assembly. The air inlet faces away from the air exhaust. 
be sure you align all porting and bolt holes to the center section of the pump. Be sure to follow manufacturer's torque specs for the air valve assembly. These torque specs are listed within the service manual. Install the main shaft o-ring. Go ahead and repeat this process for the second side. And apply grease. Now remove the pilot sleeve o-rings with an o-ring pick and discard all old o-rings. Inspect the pilot sleeve for any wear and replace as needed. Install the new pilot sleeve o-rings into the accepted o-ring grooves. Be sure not to block any porting. Once the pilot sleeve o-rings have been installed, we'll apply grease to all the pilot sleeve o-rings to ensure we do not scar, nick, or damage any of the pilot sleeve o-rings during installation. Slowly twist and turn and install the pilot sleeve into the center section of the pump. This will ensure that we do not damage, scar, nick, or roll any of the pilot sleeve o-rings. We can now install our main shaft retainer plate. Go ahead and repeat this process for the second side. Remove the pilot spool o-rings and discard. Inspect the spool to ensure there is no damage, scarring, or scratching. Install the pilot spool o-rings into the designated pilot spool o-ring grooves and work your way down leaving off one bumper o-ring. Apply grease to the pilot spool o-rings. Now install the pilot spool. Note that the bumper o-ring on the pilot spool that has not been installed yet shall be inserted first into the pilot sleeve. You may need to turn and twist and gently press in the pilot spool to ensure we do not damage any of the pilot spool o-rings. Once the spool has been fully in installed, install the bumper o-ring on the opposite side. Apply grease to the main shaft to ensure we do not damage the main shaft o-ring. Insert the rod and properly seat the outer bead of the diaphragm into the accepted groove. Be sure that the outer bead of the diaphragm seats properly into the accepted groove in the intermediate of the pump. Torque the opposite side to the rod. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine surfaces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratching, or material buildup can be cleaned up using emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. Now install the outer chamber bolts. When torquing the outer chamber bolts, be sure to torque in a cross pattern according to factory specs listed in the service manual. Now we're ready to install our opposite outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine surfaces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. 
Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. Install the bolt on the second chamber and torque bolt in the cross pattern to factory specs listed in the service manual. Now we're ready to install our suction side check balls, our valve seats, inspect the valve seats for any wear or damage, replace as needed. The chamfered side of the valve seat will face towards the suction manifold and install the valve seat o-rings. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring, damage, or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Torque the suction manifold bolts in a cross pattern according to factory specs listed in the service manual. Now we're ready to install our discharge manifold. Inspect the valve seats. Put the chamfer side towards the discharge manifold. Install our valve seat O-rings. And discharge check ball. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring, damage, or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Torque our discharge manifold bolts in a cross pattern according to factory specs. This concludes our airside rebuild of our E5 bolt to metallic polycenter pump. When doing a complete rebuild, also see our wet side video. Or, for additional information, find us on the web at versamatic.com or contact after sales support at service.versamatic at idexport.com. Thank you.